Hi, my name is Angela Collins and I am a Florida Sea Grant agent with the University of Florida and IFAS Extension. I'm based here in Manatee County and today I'm really excited to share with you some stories about seafood production right here locally in our area. We are going to look at some of our commercial wild harvest fisheries that take place in the working waterfront village of Cortez. We're going to visit with Captain Johnny Banyas, the owner of Cortez Bait and Seafood. And after that, we're going to visit with one of our shellfish aquaculture production facilities. Two Docks Shellfish um, is a clam and oyster growing operation that is right here in the Tampa Bay estuary as well. So we're excited to show you some of the local seafood that is produced right here at home in Manatee County. Thank you so much for taking time to hang out with us today and tell us a little bit about your company. Um, so can you go ahead and give us some background on who you are and how you came to be part of the seafood production in Manatee County? Right, well, I'm John Banyas. I'm fourth generation fisherman from Cortez. Um, my grandfather uh, built boats back here in the 1920s and 30s. And uh, I grew up here fishing and surfing and listening to my grandfather's fishing stories. And so I kind of got addicted because, you know, they were good stories and always entertaining. So uh, just grew up fishing and here I am and just stayed busy and building boats, working boats and reinvesting all the fish money and just kept paying it forward. And then we got to where we are today. So how long has Cortez Bait and Seafood been in business? Cortez Bait and Seafood, I started in 95 actually. Um, there was a Cortez Bait and Seafood previous from a cousin of mine, but uh, he was more of a just a truck delivery route, and uh, that was years ago. So um, in 95, I just decided to create Cortez Bait and Seafood. What are your primary species that you target? We target mostly with a killer bait. Our brand um, is mostly thread heron and sardines. Um, but we also have grouper boats, stone crab boats, um, we uh, mullet, mackerel, pompano, anything that's kind of, uh, you know, still um, viable to, to harvest, you know, these days that we can make a living on. But everything uh, species-wise is doing good. Like this particular year, there hasn't been a red tide this year, so we're predicting our mullet season to be good which is great, you know, we could st skip a year without the red tide is wonderful. So hopefully a lucrative mullet season and uh, stone crab season should be good too. So we're hoping for a good year. You know, 2020 started off good and then the, you know, the COVID thing hit and slowed us down <laughs> and threw a wrench in everybody's style. But maybe the end of the year, we can perk things up and come out on top. How many pounds of seafood do you think cost these docks every every year? We are with um, with our bait, mullet, everything. We're close to four to five million pounds a year, if you know every, everything's going good. So we're lacking this year a little bit, but uh, you know every year's a little different. Just hope for the good years. How many fishermen do you think that this company employs or keeps in? Keeps going. Here in the seafood processing plant, we have five full time, and then in the seasons, we could have as much as 30, uh, you know, during our seasons, during our heavy times. Um, but uh, typically, five, and then as things progress or boats come in, we boost up uh, payroll and employees. And then you also um, buy from independent guys, right? So we have our own company boats. I have four company boats, and then we have our independent mullet fishermen stone crabbers, grouper fishermen. So there's probably, you know, 15 or 20 independent people year round. And then at the height of our mullet season, there could be 40, 40, 50 more boats from around the state come to our area. Tell me a little bit about the retail market and the kind of business that does. Do you supply all of the seafood that's sold out of the retail market? The retail market's doing very well. It was here on the water and then it was, uh, the business was doing good. So I moved it up to Cortez Road, which is the main highway going through Cortez. And it's doing really well right now. It's nice, brand new facility and it's looking really shiny. And uh, my manager, Wire, nickname everybody's got nicknames in Cortez but he's doing really good he's doing from 80 to 120 customers a day 
he's really, really busy. And through the whole pandemic here, he's he hasn't dropped off a bit. I think everybody's wanting to eat more fish, stay at home, eat fish, be healthy. So our agriculture workers and seafood is agriculture. Um, you know, you think about farms, but really our seafood production is is Manatee County's original agricultural producer. Um, and you guys are, are kind of the original essential workers, right? Right. So do you have any trouble with um, finding good labor? Like what are some of your challenges with that even before the pandemic? Yeah. Um, well, I like to take care of my employees. So, you know, they like to work here. Um, you know, it's, it's harder finding them because we're not like a restaurant where you can say we can make a schedule for next week. If the boats aren't catching good, I don't need 30 people here all week. So I got to kind of work around it a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we get them I've, like I got my usuals and then they'll call in their friends to, you know, do other things if we need them. So it's kind of as needed. What do you think some of the biggest challenges you faced um, with the whole COVID pandemic situation? It's just been, uh, we haven't really missed a beat or a day. We've been, uh, you know, going with it, like the retail market, it stayed busy, actually got probably a little busier. The middle of the year was our off season and we worked on the boats like July and August is the worst time of year for fishing. So we took that month to work on boats and equipment and the fish house and paint and fixing. Um, our boat yard, any Taylor boat works uh, actually picked up business because everybody was wanting to go in their boats and go fishing and go out in the boat and uh, distance themselves. So the, the uh, boating industry uh, picked up. Um, restaurants at Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar, the restaurants took a big dive. It was a big hit. And then we had to remodel, spend money, try to expand outside seating. Uh, it was a bit of a letdown for sure because we were booming in January and February. We, 2020 was gonna be the year. Now we're slowly getting back to, back to normal. And we've ex expanded, did some outside seating. So, we're in survival mode and things are looking better now. Yeah. Cortez has definitely had challenges before, so. Right, um, right. This is just one more. Fishing's yeah. always a challenge. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get. You don't know what the season is. Uh, it's just, you can just keep working, you know, through it. So you always find some work to do on the boat or repair something. Either you're making money or you're spending money, so kind of need a vacation sometime soon, but I don't see that coming either. <laughs> so how many businesses in Cortez are you um, owner or partner in? So I started with Cortez Bait and Seafood in 95, and then we opened the Cortez Kitchen, which is an outside restaurant, open air kind of baskets and uh, everything from there. So we have the Cortez Kitchen uh, is a one restaurant that I lease out. Um, and then we, started any Taylor Boat Works was my grandfather's business back in the 20s and 30s where he used to build boats here in Cortez. So I recreated that in 2001 and brought any Taylor Boat Works back to life. So we have a 75 metric ton travel lift, full service boat yard, uh, woodworking, fiberglass, repowers, anything you need to do to your boat on the water. And then we opened Swordfish Grill and Tiki Bar um, seven years ago and it's doing really well. We have an inside outside dining with a 185 seats and uh, outside Tiki bar. We expanded because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We, so we have more additional outside seating. Um, and we also have a beautiful retail fish market also up on Cortez road. Um, so you can buy all your local fish. It all comes, most of all of it comes in here or on the West coast of Florida. What's your favorite part about commercial fishing? Just being on the water, leaving the dock, not being in an office. I have a beautiful office that I'm never in <laughs> because I'm always on the boat, working on the boat or on the water, you know? So uh, just just like being on the water, kind of fortunate to be able to, to fish. I'm uh, blessed with a good lifestyle. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today and You're share very with welcome. us your intimate knowledge of the commercial fisheries in Manatee County.
with Dr. Erin Welch of Tudox Shellfish. Uh, Tudox Shellfish is one of the shellfish aquaculture production businesses here in Manatee County. Um, Dr. Welch is going to share with us today a little bit about this business and about shellfish aquaculture in our area. So we really thank you for taking the time to hang out with us today and, and show us what you guys produce. Happy to be here. So thanks for being here, Angela. Um, yeah, I'm Aaron. I'm with Two Dock Shellfish. We are a, primarily a hard clam producer, although we are experimenting a little bit with oysters and Sunray Venus clams as well. Uh, we farm sites here in Lower Tampa Bay, just north of the Skyway Bridge. Um, and we have a processing facility in Eastern Manatee County where we uh, prepare our animals for delivery out to local markets. Um, we also operate a small hatchery facility in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida. Uh, we have uh, four full-time employees and three part-time employees um, between our farm and processing facility here in Manatee County uh, and our hatchery operation over in Fort Pierce. Um, our products are delivered throughout the Sarasota, Brighton, and St. Petersburg area. Uh, we also sell some product in bulk to larger distributors who move product into grocery stores and large food service distribution outlets. And we're a full service, vertically integrated, stem to stern hard clam producer. So tell me a little bit about the benefits of shellfish aquaculture to the consumer and also to the environment. The number one benefit to the consumer is it's a fantastic product. It tastes delicious. Uh, you can use it in a bunch of different ways, in a bunch of different culinary traditions. It's a fantastic product and it's produced right here by people who you can reach out and touch or at least know who they are and where they farm. Um, we're here, we're producing a great product and we're accountable uh, to all of our consumers. So that's the first benefit to the consumer. Um, you know, there's a benefit to our community too. Um, Florida is a tourism driven economy and working waterfront and, and companies that are working watermen and water women are harder and harder to find these days. So we're keeping some of those traditions alive. Um, we have a crew full of, of working watermen who are out there every day keeping those traditions uh, of Florida's maritime industries alive. And then thirdly, what we produce is fantastic for the environment. Uh, we put filter feeders into the, into the bay and we keep them there for a year. Uh, and those animals are filtering excess nutrients and excess plankton from the water column, making the water column cleaner, making the bay happier, and making everybody's experience a little bit better when they go on the water. And we do all that free of charge. You just gotta pay to eat them. Um, your average adult middle neck size clam will filter five to 10 gallons of water a day, every day. Um, it's just a great product for the environment. So shellfish is one of the safest seafood products on the market because they are so highly regulated. So if you buy your shellfish in the store or restaurant, Tell us a little bit about how sure we are that that is just the best and safest product out there to eat. The shellfish industry in Florida is regulated very tightly and very um, smartly. We are required by the state of Florida to track every animal from the second we harvest it until the second we deliver it. Um, we have very strict time and temperature rules uh, that change with the season. In the hot months, we have a pretty small window of time that we're required to have our animals harvested on deck and into a cooler. Um, we also have um, rules about how, how cold we have to keep the animals, how we have to deliver the animals. We have to have paperwork for everything. We track every animal and you can be confident. If you eat a clam that was produced on our farm, you can track it back to our farm and to the person who harvested it. So tell us a little bit about some of the market challenges that you guys face as an industry here on the West Coast of Florida. This is a fantastic place to farm shellfish. Our animals get to market in around a year, which is great. Um, we can produce cheaper than almost anybody else in the country because of how fast our, our, our animals grow up to market size. But we do have some environmental challenges, especially red tide. Um, Southwest Florida, which Tampa Bay is sort of on the northern edge of the Southwest Florida region, um, we experience periodic red tides. Um, those red tides seem to be increasing in frequency and intensity um, over the last decade or so. And when we get a red tide, while it doesn't kill our animals, it does make them temporarily toxic, which means we can't harvest the animals um, while they're toxic and then we have to wait for the animals to purge the toxins out of their tissue that 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 harvesting interruption can be really hard on our business if we go two or three months without being able to harvest and service our markets it's it's really detrimental to the business and to the industry so that's that's our biggest overall challenge and then obviously we've all dealt with covid in our day-to-day -day lives it's been hard on the shellfish business too uh, most of our revenue as a company is derived from the restaurant trade um, when covid hit and the shutdowns went into effect our revenue went to zero overnight uh, and we had almost two months with no revenue. Um, it was a really sort of tense, scary time for our business. Uh, the PPP loans came through and some other things broke our way in the end. And I think we're on our, on our feet and, and moving forward again. But 
business is still down as a result of COVID. We're about at half of what we were this time last year. Um, but things seem to be moving in the right direction. Business is picking up a little bit every week right now. What do you recommend um, consumers to do and, and local people to do to support your industry? What's the best thing they can do? Buy our products and talk to your friends about our products. Um, go to restaurants that feature local products. Yeah, just eat Manatee County raised food, uh, seafood, tomatoes, citrus, um, eat it all. That's the best thing you can do. Um, so tell, talk a little bit about some of the market issues and labor issues you might have experienced, how your guys kept working even during COVID. When COVID hit, I got a couple phone calls. Do I come to work? I think I have to come to work. And we said, yeah, and we went to it and we took every step to protect ourselves. Um, but our guys were out there and they were out there throughout the shutdowns. And it wasn't just that they were taking a risk with their health. Um, we had to figure out ways to get boats in the water because ramps were shut down. We had to figure out ways to get to work because roads were shut down. And it, it was just a real challenge for us, but I was so proud of everybody that worked for this team. Dr. Welch, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about Two Doc Shellfish with us today. We're really honored that we were able to talk to you and we're really, really happy that Shellfish Aquaculture is here in Manatee County. Dr. Collins, thanks for showing up. We love having you and uh, appreciate everybody watching this video and supporting what we do and everybody else who produces here in Manatee County. Oh,